Now let's take a look at the following example that deals with using the laws of conservation for lepton numbers to determine which one of these five particle interactions will actually take place in nature. So basically, since these five reactions don't contain the tau lepton or the tau anti-lepton, we don't have to worry about the law of conservation for tau lepton numbers. We're only going to concern ourselves with electron lepton numbers and muon lepton numbers. So let's begin with a. So in A, we have a single muon that basically produces or decays into an electron as well as an electron antineutrino. So the question that we want to ask is the electron lepton number conserved. So let's begin with the electron. So let's begin with our left side. So on the left side, according to our table, we see that our muon gets an electron lepton number of zero. So basically anything not on this table automatically gets an electron lepton number of zero. Now, what about this side? On this side, we have an electron which gets a positive one and the electron antineutrino which gets a negative one. So on this side, we have a positive one and a negative one and this adds up to zero so we see that the left side is equal to the right side and so the electron lepton number for reaction A is conserved. What about the muon lepton number? So let's begin with the left side. On the left side we have a muon which gets a positive one. Now what about our right side? The right side doesn't actually contain any of our particles shown on this table and so that means these get a zero and this is zero and because these are not equal we see that the muon lepton number is not conserved and so reaction A will not readily take place. Let's move on to reaction B. So in reaction B we have an anti-muon that produces a positron, we have an electron neutrino, and the muon antineutrino. So let's begin with determining whether or not the electron lepton number is conserved. And let's examine uh, the left side. So the left side, once again, we have zero because we have none of these particles. What about the right side? Well, we have a positron which has a negative one. We have our electron neutrino which gets a positive one and this gets a zero. So we have a positive one, we have minus one, and this is equal, so that means the electron lepton number is conserved. What about the muons? So, let's begin with this side. So we have an anti-muon which gets a negative one. Now, is this equal to the right side on which we have this, which gets a muon lepton number of zero, this gets a muon lepton number of zero, and this gets a negative one according to our table. So we see that negative one is in fact equal to negative one, and so because both of these lepton numbers are conserved, we see that this does in fact take place. What about C? Well, in C we have the muon that basically decays into an electron. We have our muon neutrino and the electron anti-neutrino. Let's begin with the electrons. So, we see that on our left side we have no electrons, we have none of these particles, so our left side gets a zero. What about the right side? Well, we have a positive one and we have a negative one and a zero. So we have a positive one for this and a negative one for this. So we see that this side, positive one minus one, and since zero is equal to zero, we see that the electron lepton number is in fact conserved. What about the muon? 
Well, the muon lepton number on this side is positive 1. So let's put that for the left side. What about the right side? Well, we have 0, we have 0, and we have positive 1 because our muon, uh, the muon neutrino, gets a positive 1. So that means we have positive 1 is equal to positive 1, and so our reaction does in fact take place. What about D? Well, for D, we begin on the left side, well, once again, with our electron lepton number. So, on the left side, we have a zero for our anti-muon. Now, is this equal to? Well, this side gets a negative one. Because if we look at our table, this gets a negative 1. What about our regular electron neutrino? This has a positive 1, and negative 1 and positive 1 does in fact make a 0, so our electron lepton number is conserved. What about the muon lepton number? Well, let's begin with this side. This side gets a negative 1 because it's an anti-muon. So according to this table, this has a negative 1. Now, is this equal to? Well, on this side, we don't have any of these leptons, and so we have zero, and this is not true. So that means this reaction, reaction D, does not readily take place. <coughs> And finally, let's examine reaction D. So, in reaction D, let's begin with the electron. So, we begin once again with the left side. The left side tells us we have zero on the left side because we have none of these. Now, what about our right side? Well, the right side has an electron, so that gets a positive one. And then we have our electron and sine neutrino, which gets a negative one, so this works. What about the muon lepton number? Well, on this side, we have a positive one. What about on this side? On this side, we basically have none, so that means this is not equal to zero, and so we see that this does not actually readily take place. And so only two out of our five reactions actually take place, and we were able to use the laws of conservation for lepton numbers to actually determine which ones of these reactions actually take place.